Since the early 1970s, Rutgers University campus has been home to the sport of disc golf. From the days when it was just an object course to modern times, it is just a sleepy little course nestled in the campus of a busy university. Today is the day of March o St. Pat's Madness Tournament, and to see who comes out on top of the madness, stay tuned as Disc Golf Monthly starts now. Welcome to another edition of Disc Golf Monthly. We're here at the Rutgers Disc Golf Course at the Cook Douglas College campus at Rutgers University for the 2009 March O St. Madness Disc Golf Tournament. Welcome everyone, I'm Carl Cubbage and I'm joined by world-class disc golfer Matt LaCourt. We're here at Rutgers Disc Golf Course. It's been my home course for the last 10 years. Matt, you've been playing it for a long time and even put the inner chains in on the course. Tell us a little bit about this great course here well, at Rutgers. Well, Rutgers has an extensive history dating back to 1974 when the first octad was conducted there uh, on the grounds of the very grounds where we play disc golf today. Uh, the, the course has gone over many changes throughout the years. Uh, these tees that we're playing were added uh, after uh, uh, we got tired of just playing these tee signs. They got a little bit short, so we're looking for a little bit more challenge. So we're going to see some extended tees here. We're going to see some of the jam holes that we typically play uh, in our bigger tournament out there in the summer. And we'll play some of the three field holes. And we'll see some of the holes that you won't normally see around. Well, Matt, as, as you said, the original course was put in when we were throwing those lids that didn't go that far. So the short tees at the time suited the purpose. But for a course like this and with the big arms we've got, they really needed to stretch out and uh, change the layout. Yeah, they did. And it was really to add more of a challenge because we had also we needed to add more holes also because we were getting such a big turnout for our events at Rutgers that uh, in order to accommodate more of the people that are coming, we had to add holes. So we had a 21-hole course for a couple of years and finally just went to a uh, am one day and a pro the next day just to accommodate the masses that come out to this historic course. Matt, and if someone's just out there playing it during a regular day where it's the tee signs, you can play that course virtually any time of day. And I often play it like at 2 or 3 in the morning in the summer. And it's incredible because, the, you know, being a middle of the a bustling major college campus, there's lights uh, to, you know, light the way for the students at night to their night classes, which <laughs> fortunately for us, light up the disc golf course and you really don't need a light at night. All you need, you know, maybe on hole 10, you have a little bit of a problem, but that's about it. And they correlate pretty much all the underbrush throughout the years, being that it's a urban college campus. Well, Matt, this event rings in the springtime, and it's great to see everybody out there having a great time. Uh, before we uh, cover our finals, let's go down and get a little history of the Rutgers Disc Golf Course and Disc Golf at that facility. The origin of Disc Golf at the Rutgers Douglas and Cook Campus began as an object course. Its layout was very similar to today's layout, beginning and ending near the Woodbury Residence Hall. One interesting hole that offered a unique challenge was the last one on which players could throw a shot over the rooftop of the Woodbury Dormitory. The famous passion puddle was even incorporated into the layout with the risk of having your disc go into the pond included on two holes. The campus has been hosting numerous big disc tournaments in the 1970s and 80s, the Jersey Jam being the only one that exists today. By far, the most participated event ever held at Rutgers was the 1974 Jersey Jam, which at that time was held as a multi-disc event, which had over 250 participants playing in seven events over a three-day period. Permanent targets came to Rutgers in 1982 as a result of a scheduling conflict in which the WFDF World Championships had to be relocated from its original location, the Rose Bowl. The course was installed in 29 days and was paid for by tournament sponsor Mazda. The targets were DGA's single chain Mach 1 baskets. The course was designed by Dan Doyle, whose recent accomplishments have been TD of several national tour events in the Mad Sea and Nifa regions, donating over 50 discs to Vietnamese orphan children and working on having a portable course put in at a VA hospital in Coatesville, PA. The legacy of the Rutgers Disc Golf Course is that it is a short course that was designed in the days when disc golf was played with ordinary frisbees referred to as big lids because of the resemblance to trash can lids. Although the single chain Mach 1 baskets have been modified to have a secondary inner chain, the baskets do not meet the technical requirements to allow the course to host a PDGA A-tier event. The layout of the course is not long, 
rather short and technical, perfect for players to enhance their skills on traversing the course while building their putt and approach skills. The course is host to the annual event, the Jersey Jam, every summer. The layout of the Jersey Jam is modified and uses a larger part of the campus to allow for several par 4 holes. To get more information on the event, log on to www.discdevils.org. And speaking of devils, here's Disc Devil B.O.B. Bob Graham to give us a lesson on how to get more power from your drive using the cross step. Hi, I'm Bob Graham and I'm going to show you how to improve your distance with the X-Step, which is a traditional style of throwing. The key element to throwing the X-Step is setting your hips up to make the drive through. What you're going to do is you bring your hips open and follow your, your body's going to coil through from the, your hips as it flows. That's the purpose of the X-Step. So I'll show you. First thing you're going to do is line up with your target. You're going to begin with your your forward foot is going to be your throwing hand. You're going to step forward, cross over, and what you're doing is you're setting your hips in reverse. So you're kind of twisting your body. If you take your first step, you twist your body. You're going to bring the disc back on the twist, and as you bring your hips forward, your disc is going to follow. So this hip's going to come forward, and this is going to follow through. If you caught it, my hips are coming forward, and my body is uncoiling behind my hip. And that's the X step. Matt, that was a great piece on the history of Rutgers Disc Golf, and Bob certainly is a B.O.B. He can certainly show you a thing or two on the course. Yes, he can. He, he has a magic touch on the chains here at Rutgers. All right, Matt, let's see. Who are we going to follow today? we got some new faces out here for Disc Golf Monthly. Well, first off, uh, we're going to have someone we've seen before is Devin Frederick uh, from Quakertown, PA, a young up-and-coming uh, player who has shown a lot of game uh, lately, and uh, he's in the lead right now after a hot first round. And then we have uh, John Murphy who's also right there tied with him. And John Murphy is from uh, Levittown, PA. And uh, he's a young and up-and-come player who's been only playing pro for a couple of years now. And then lastly, we have uh, John Henry Kane from Salem, New Jersey. He's been a longtime New Jersey player. He plays a lot down in Delaware, and he's bidding for a big win today. Yeah, three great players, good guys, uh, all of them, and uh, should be an exciting, exciting finals here. Uh, Matt, before we do that, we're going to go back and uh, take a break, and then we'll be right back, and we'll cover all the action here at Rutgers.